Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, one of the dermatologists based in the UK. Today I thought I would look at a topic that is very commonly asked in clinic, which is the management of dry and sensitive facial skin. Before I go into it, let's look briefly at its association with rosacea, a common skin condition that causes spots and redness on the face. Rosacea is a common chronic inflammatory skin disease of unknown cause that mainly affects the skin regions that are rich in sebaceous glands. This includes the central face, the nose, the chin, and the forehead. It's more common in those who have fair skin. The clinical features of rosacea include flushing, persistent redness or erythema, dilated blood vessels, erythematous papules, pustules, and phyma or thickened skin, particularly on the nose. The four major clinical subtypes of rosacea are telangiectatic, papular pustula, phymatis, and ocular rosacea. Although rosacea occurs in skin rich in oil glands, the affected skin of patients is paradoxically very dry and sensitive. Several functional studies indicate that the skin permeability barrier is dysfunctional in rosacea. There's an increased transepidermal water loss and skin hydration levels are significantly reduced. In fact, some studies have shown that the barrier function is compromised almost as much as that with atopic eczema. The inflammatory changes in the skin in rosacea further reduces the barrier function. The associated dilated blood vessels can increase transepidermal water loss, TEWL, with consequent reduction in epidermal hydration levels and this stimulates more inflammation. It's a vicious cycle, and unless we preserve the barrier function in the skin, we cannot adequately control rosacea. Treating rosacea with oral antibiotics and topical anti-inflammatory agents alone will therefore not result in optimal control of symptoms. It is important to advise those with rosacea about over-the-counter products for dry skin. This is exactly the same advice that will help anyone with sensitive facial skin. In an extensive review of this topic, Dr. Zoe Drelos, a world-famous dermatologist, suggests various cosmeceuticals, including cleansers, moisturizers, and sunscreens. So let's have a brief look at them. Facial cleansing is important because rosacea is a condition that affects the biofilm. Demodex and pitrisporum on the skin surface may play a role, as does overexpression of surface proteins. All these accumulate on the skin and need to be removed. The cleansing should remove excess sebum, environmental debris, dead surface skin, unwanted organisms, and old skincare products. However, the barrier function should still be preserved. Selection of the right cleanser is therefore very important. It must match the sebum production and cleansing needs of the patient. Note that those with sensitive skin possess combination skin, so they may require a cleanser for oily skin for the sebum rich central face and a cleanser for dry skin on the lateral sides of the face. Generally, for oily and normal skin, we need to use soap. For dry skin, on the other hand, we need to use a lipid free cleanser. Here are some guidelines on how to cleanse the skin. It should be performed twice a day in the morning and the evening. Fingers coated with a cleanser can get into the curves and folds around the nose where pitrisporum and demodex organisms grow. The water should be lukewarm and not too hot or cold to prevent facial flushing caused by rapid temperature change. Abundant water should be used to remove the cleanser thoroughly. If not, the cleanser itself can cause irritation. After washing, gently pat the skin dry with a soft towel to minimize redness induced by rubbing. Once cleansed, apply a moisturizer as it prevents evaporation of water from the skin into the environment. However, they should not support bacterial growth. For this reason, it is better to avoid moisturizers containing oils. So coconut oil, olive oil, hemp argan and sunflower oil are best avoided. Silicone-based moisturizers like dimethicone are best to use because they are aesthetically pleasing and do not support the growth of organisms. If you do a web search, you can identify moisturizers with silicone that are available in the country where you live. The ideal moisturizer for sensitive skin combines occlusive agents that prevent water loss like petrolatum, dimethicone and mineral oils with humectant ingredients that draws water from the dermis like glycerin. There are many preparations available in the market like CeraVe, Cetaphil, Eucerin and Avene and this is available in most countries that have a combination of these ingredients that have just been mentioned. In the end, Identifying emollients is best determined by the person who has sensitive skin. 
I would always suggest testing a small sample on one area of the skin, maybe the jawline or in front of the ear. Then gradually increase the extent that you apply it on the rest of the facial skin. If any preparations causes irritation, just try and avoid it. Moisturizers can also be combined with a sunscreen as photo damage contributes to sensitive skin. A broad spectrum sunscreen with a sun protection factor of at least 30 plus is optimal. Many with rosacea or sensitive skin or acne do not like using sunscreens because they are sticky and impart a warm feeling to the skin. This may be caused by organic sunscreens which convert UV light into heat. Inorganic sunscreens such as titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are better as they reflect light. Remember that we have mentioned just general principles. If your skin reacts positively to a moisturizer that has other ingredients, just stick to it. Each person's skin is unique and no single product will suit everyone. I hope these general principles are helpful for you. Thanks for listening and bye.